Welcome to the instructional portion of the video. You can get tabs and backing tracks if you go to my website, www.erichaugenguitar.com. Let me briefly talk about the tools I'm using to make the sounds I'm making today. This is a 1995 Gibson Les Paul Classic. I'm using the bridge pickup. I'm going into my board using my Strymon Deco for crunch, as well as a little bit of slapback, using my Strymon Flint for reverb. Going on down the line, I'm using a Dusky D2O head running into my Tweed cabinet with a Weber 15-inch Alnico speaker, mic'd up with an SE Electronics passive ribbon mic, the X1R. That's what you're hearing. Now let's learn stuff. Okay, the opening run is off of an E minor. And what I wanted to make was something that kind of was like a cool, snaky run that wasn't too, too linear. So, oh, three, two, one, oh. And that's the first part. And then zero on, on the, the G to the E, uh, to the D string. So it kind of bounces when it gets near that second half, so it's not a straight run. Because then it's landing on an A minor, so I constructed that line. So yeah, so it really kind of snake its way in there. Uh, I think that's clear. Oh, three, two, one, oh. Oh, two, two, two. O on the B, one on the B, land on the two of the G, to imply the A minor. And then a little slidey kind of four to five on the B, um, letting that high E in, just because I thought it would sound cool. And then it's, the song drops back to E minor, just really spelling that out. O, one, O, O. And then I'm going to kind of crawl back up in A minor. Again, that bouncing kind of thing. Two, oh, two, 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 oh, one, two, two. Yeah, I guess that's kind of quoting the opening. Now, uh, the next run was kind of inspired from Chet Atkins learning um. Was that uh, his take on um? Oh, I can't remember the name of it now. I think it's Blue Angel that I one day I'll be able to play it right. But he has some cool open string runs, and that's where this came from. Not directly, but it got me thinking about, like, okay, the song is about to go to D minor. I need to get to a D minor. So I'm thinking from this position of A minor, 7 on the D, open B. Five on the G, seven on the G. Even that's a cool lick. Good lick. Laying that in. So, I hit an open E. And then, yep, a six on the B, an eight on the B. So that gives you a big run that's weird and unpredictable. Landing on the 10 there because the song's on a D minor. So then I was thinking George Harrison with this pre-bendy kind of thing. That's very out of uh, Helter Skelter because isn't there a solo? That's a yeah, there's licks like that in Helter Skelter, uh, and that's where that one kind of came from or was inspired from. So, now, so I'm thinking, you know, D minor up here, so, you know, blues stuff if I wanted. Pre-bend that 13 of the B, and then pre-bend that 12 of the G. Yeah, even that's cool. This is where it got cool. The song switches to a G. There's a G. There's a G. There's a G right there. So and 
now I kind of switch into twang mode a little bit. Because, yeah, I can see that I'm pushing that 10th fret up to a 12, which is an A up to a B, which is the second up to a third of a G chord. So, again, you're aiming for thirds. That's what we like to do a lot of the time. And that's, you know, twang, twangy lick. That's kind of the BB King box. Sneak that pinky underneath. Ten, ten, let it down. Eight. Now the song goes to F. Booyah, there's an F. And then I was like, boy, that sure sounded nice. So basically I started to just twang across all the chords with that idea. So on the G, to the F. That's, yeah, that, there it is on the F, you know. Um, started on that six, eight goes up. Pinky sneaks underneath. Um, to get that eight, comes down. And then the song goes to C. Seems in tune, okay. So yeah, from the F, now I'm on a C. I'm sorry, let me tune. What's up? Okay, he's fine. Uh, from the F, the song switches to C. Let's think about it. There's a C, there's a C. And I know that I can do the same thing, bending the two up to the, th the three of the chord. Yep, that, there it is. Skinnered. Uh, that is, yeah, pushing up that seven. Grabbing now the eight with the pinky. So that whole run, uh, let's see. I... The song is now on a big old E7, so then I just do some droney ponies. Mm hmm So that is four. By the way, Droney Ponies, I give credit to my friend Dave Brooks. I remember he said that in one of the comments on one of my videos. It stuck with me. Droney Ponies. Good work, Dave. Okay. So four, oh, oh. You know, because that's just an E of some variety. And then all the way up to do the same idea on nine. Yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, let's take the... Eh, nah, you can watch the solo again. That's the solo. By the way, this is from... Boy, this is from a pretty old song. This is from Fake Swedish, my kind of more psychedelic on-again, off-again project. I'll put a link to the band camp to listen to the recorded version. Oh, I think this was recorded way back in 2005. Uh, but I always like this solo, and I think it's a good lesson in playing to changes in a kind of twangy way. Now, the main riff of the song that you hear me play next... That was, like, inspired, actually, by Wes Montgomery, of all things. I was thinking of, like, block chord theory of, like, seeing if I could, like, throw or make a riff that was chords. That's so. It's all A minor, really. O, 9, so, you know, that's the A string. O, 9, wait, O, 10, 9, 10. That's an A minor inversion. And then I'm actually implying a G across that, so O, uh, nine, seven, eight, an A minor, O, seven, five, five, and then I'm playing with thirds only, four and three on the G and the B, two and one, yeah, it's back up, yeah, this part is very Fleetwood Mac. Definitely a little bit of Rhiannon in that riff. So yes, there, uh, okay, how that riff works. Second time it just hangs there and then it comes around again. And 
one just ends with, you know. Yeah, cool, twangy solo with, yeah, there's, there's Chet Atkins in there. There's George Harrison in there. You could say there's Brian Setzer in there. And secretly, that opening lick is really inspired by Slash, of all people. I love the way Slash solos, you can always sing them. They're very memorable. They always start with some awesome lick. So that, that's kind of actually where I was, where that, even though it doesn't sound like Slash. Oh, look, I'm playing a Les Paul. Uh, that's where that came from. I hope you have fun with that. Good luck and thanks for watching.